Hello guys, welcome back. We're talking about another phono stage here. Uh, this is the Musical Fidelity MX Vinyl uh, fully balanced MM and MC phono stage. Um, so if you've seen my previous videos, uh, I've talked about why I feel a phono stage is very important and a really important part of your source signal. Um, because what it does is it re-equalizes for the RIAA uh, standards or your IEC standards um, the uh, boosting of the bass by as much as 20 dB and the reduction of uh, high frequencies by as much as uh, 20 dB at its extremes um, and then it amplifies it uh, amplifies the uh, small voltages that that are coming in from your cartridge and uh, tone arm uh, wires that are ranging from very small 0.2 millivolts to still very small 5 to 7 millivolts from say a moving magnet into your integrated amplifier and your preamplifier. So uh, we're dealing with very small voltages here and large shifts in uh, EQ um, before the amplification. So it's critical that the re-EQ and the gain is done so uh, quite well. So that's where the design execution and the uh, components used uh, in the circuitry is very important to be uh, uh, a part of your uh, source signal. And it's very important to have a good phono stage to get the best sound. So here, this uh, Musical Fidelity Max Vinyl uh, so sold new for just under $1,000. Nine ninety five thousand uh, or thousand dollars USD. Um, they're still available, and there've been uh, some uh, sites that are actually selling them for eight hundred USD now. Um, in some places, they're uh, low in stock, but some still have them for sale. I'll try and put a picture up of that. Um, so this is, like I said, a fully balanced uh, phono stage um, from the input to the output. Let's talk. Uh, the back of the unit since we're talking connections here. So if your turntable's capable of uh, outputting a balanced signal, you have balanced input here. You also have RCA inputs uh, with grounding screws. Uh, there's a toggle switch between the balanced and unbalanced uh, input. Then on the output stage you have your um, uh, RCA cables and your XLR cables and then you have your uh, uh, inlet for your power adapter as well. So uh, in the front here, you have the on and off toggle switch. Um, on this side, on, on the next to that is a toggle switch for RIAA or IEC curves. So RIAA is the Recording Industry Association of America. So from 1954 onwards, uh, this set a standard for um, the equalization uh, process of when and how it is cut on the groove uh, where the high frequencies are bo uh, boosted up and the low frequencies are cut and then the uh, re-equalization happens in, in the phone station. That's the standard used here. The IEC standard came after sometime in the 70s to address uh, records that might be a little warped and that produce a lot of uh, low frequency rumble and that was used. The IEC curve essentially is a moderate rumble filter if you want to call it that. Uh, so that's what this switch is for, that's what this option is for. Um, and then there is a balanced indicator uh, LED here. Essentially that indicates if your source signal is balanced. Uh, then you have this rotary knob here that allows for adjustments on the fly, meaning as you're playing the music, this, as the signal is coming through, you can adjust the dial for uh, gain settings. Um, I'm sorry, not gain settings, uh, for input capacitance and uh, input impedance settings for moving coils and capacitance settings for moving magnet. The uh, moving magnet settings here for input capacitance range from 50 picofarads to 400 picofarads uh, for the uh, mm uh, cartridges for the moving coil you have input impedance settings from 10 ohms all the way up to 
4.7 or 47,000 kilo ohms here. So quite a flexible uh, phono stage here. And uh, there is a switch here for gain settings as well. It has a zero mark and a plus six dB uh, switch as well. So this addresses the ranges for both moving magnet and moving coil. Moving magnet uh, ranges from 42 dB uh, to 48 dB. And for moving coil, it ranges from 57 dB to 63 dB. So this range should take care of most of the uh, moving coil. I've had this phono stage for over three years now maybe two and a half years um, and in, in its life it has seen a variety of uh, cartridges uh, and turntables and tone arm combinations. Um, I've used the VPI Classic 1 with uh, a Dynavac XX2 Mark II moving coil. It's also seen um, the likes of the Riga Planar 8 and the Planar 10 with uh, cartridges like the Koitsu Black, uh, Dyna Vector 20X2L, um, and it has also seen some fine high output moving coils like the uh, 10X5, Dyna Vector 10X5, and the HANA SH, and a few uh, moving magnets as well. Uh, the uh, nicest one that I've owned is a Clear Audio Maestro wood setting um, that had an output about 3.5 to 4 millivolts. Um, as well on this. So this has seen a variety of combinations, but I have ended up using it mostly on uh, my uh, Koetsu Black, which is a low output moving coil, okay? Uh, and the uh, sonic impressions I have of this unit is primarily it's beautiful mid-range and a quite noise floor for dynamics and soundstage uh, organization to show through. So let's talk through some of the albums. Um, Emergency Count Buffaloes. This is a Toshiba pressing um, that's uh, it's an excellent Japanese pressing. And I think the recording process used minimal compression or maybe no compression uh, while a recording. So this, uh, sh the, the dynamics and the textures of percussion, guitar, and voices come through really, really well. Uh, the song here on side one, the first track is called Yamato Mizu. Um, starts off with uh, drumsticks clacking and the, there is nice body and definition around uh, the drumsticks as in localized in space. And um, soon after that clacking, the bass drumming begins and the horn section and the drums come in all at once and it's quite impactful very good dynamics very good arrangement of uh, soundstage as well um, and then uh, the second track here is called you're as right as rain this is uh, a redo of james uh, bob james uh, track with a nice different paced bass line that can sound very woolly and fat and overblown if the uh, if there's something wrong in your system as far as uh, your uh, speaker positioning or if you have a cartridge that's uh, bass heavy and if your phone stage is not doing a good job of accurately um, transmitting uh, the signal. Uh, the combination of the Planar 10 with the uh, the latest combination that I'm using, the Rega Planar 10 with the Koetsu Black passing through this uh, on my full range speakers brings out the baseline nuances really well. And there is this warmth that uh, you hear coming through this uh, phono stage. Um, it just sounds really, really pleasant to listen to. And of course, this is also one of those cartridges, uh, one of those phono stages that you end up just playing the entire album. Next up in that uh, is the drum solo that's explosive and you hear all the nuances and the textures and the detailed layering of the soundstage. This does really, really well.
Uh, another album here is uh, Joe Henderson's State of the Tenor. This is volume one. And this is a tone poet release uh, reissue of uh, the uh, Blue Note album. Again, here, um, there is a lot of uh, bass line here with one of my favorite bassists, Ron Carter. And again, if your system's not tuned properly, your bass won't be defined. Your bass lines are not defined. Um, and uh, this phono stage does an excellent job of rendering the detail in the bass. And of course, uh, the uh, by Joe Henderson sounds fantastic. Uh, the uh, saxoph sound of the saxophone are um, warm and very pleasing. Uh, not harsh, very smooth, has just the right amount of bite um, and uh, the, the detail and the resolution of this intimate trio of saxophone, bass and drums is just very nicely organized. Uh, next up, to demonstrate uh, mid-range again, here is uh, Dexter Gordon's A Swing in Affair. My favorite track on this LP is Don't Explain. Dexter Gordon again on um, tenor sax sounds gorgeous, uh, warm, lush sounding tenor saxophone. Uh, it's very pleasing to hear. Uh, next up is Kenny Burrell's Introducing Kenny Burrell. This is another tone poet, uh, tone poet release and uh, has some of my favorite musicians here. Kenny Burrell on guitar, our Detroit man. Tommy Flanagan, also uh, a Detroit man uh, on the piano. Paul Chambers on bass. Kenny Clark on drums and uh, Candido on conga drum. My favorite uh, tracks on this are Delilah and Blues for Skeeter. Those are the last two songs of this album. Uh, the song Delilah starts off with uh, Congo drums and uh, Candido on these, uh, and the sound from the Congo drums just leaps out from blackness or from a, uh, a really quiet background. And these, these sonic images just leap out of the air and that shows how quiet this phono stage is. Uh, excellent dynamics. And soon after uh, the conga drums and the bass lines by um, Kenny Clark, uh, sorry, by Paul Chambers, uh, you have Kenny Burrell's guitar come in and here the tone of the guitar is so beautiful, full and lush sounding, yet very well defined in its soundstage. Um, and that's that, that shows you how quite this noise floor is and how well it does dynamics. Frequency extension is also very good. Organization of soundstage and the beautiful mid-range is spot on. Very, very pleasant to listen to. Um, now, how does this compare against uh, the Riga Aria or the Chord Huey? Uh, both the Riga Aria and the Chord Huey have, I feel, uh, a little uh, better extension in uh, the bass and the treble regions. And they do soundstage pinpoint accuracy in the soundstage is a little better uh, on the Rega and even better on the Huey. But the, this, the mid-range aspect of it, this brings it out really, really well. It really does mid-range very, very well. It's full and clean and yet warm sounding and it walks that fine balance and it does a fantastic job of that. Yes, the uh, more expensive phono stages do um, the mid-range and other things much better, but you can get this for 800 and those are in the 1500 USD range. So there you go, this is a big price jump and you do get some benefits. But uh, for an under 1000 USD, uh, this phono stage, I think, in my personal opinion, very good. It's a very good contender and a very good bang for the buck. So um, that's what I have, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it's going to help me out a lot. I hope to do a few more um, phono stage reviews as well, uh, and that'll be coming on soon. Thanks for watching again.